Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. I am your host Jack and this is another Photoshop Elements video tutorial. First of all I want to thank everybody for the great comments they've been sending in. I've been getting tons of emails lately and the shows are really producing a lot of feedback and, and that's what it takes for these, this type of show or this type of tutorial is get your questions and then I'll wrap my hands around it and try to figure out a nice way to do this for you. Second, um, if, and I know a lot of people said, Jack, you advertise your DVDs too much, but advertising my DVDs is actually helping the shows because it helps to pay for all the necessary equipment, helps to pay for the website. If you go to jackstechcorner.com, I have a great new uh, double set out. There's a Volume 1, Volume 2 set. And for you Mac viewers out there, I've also produced a Mac DVD. And on this Mac DVD, I've went as far to include not only Element 6 uh, for the Mac users, but iPhoto 09. Uh, you're going to find some great iPhoto 09 tips in there, some new stuff that iPhoto 09 includes. And you're going to include it in there is how to use Bridge. And I showed Bridge, I think, on one video a while back. But Bridge is a nice um, replacement kind of for iPhoto that ties in really well with Elements. So that video is there. I also created a three DVD set. So go to jackstechcorner.com and look at all the options now you have to actually pick up a DVD. Um, maybe you just want volume two and you don't want volume one, you can do that. Also on the website you'll notice that the green screen wizard is located on the left hand side of my website. If you're going to purchase from Ken with green screen wizard, please go to my website jackstechcorner.com and click on that link or click on that graphics. That also helps to show out in, in a lot of other ways. Uh, Ken's a great sponsor of the show, and, and I want to make sure that you understand that. So, what are we going to do in this video tutorial? Well, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go with this email from uh, Abnibs04. Abnibs04, I don't know. People use uh, really crazy names when they use uh, YouTube. You know, everybody uh, wants to be... Um, Anonymous, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, I don't have your real name, so I'll just go with that. And it says, thanks for your videos. They have been very helpful. Well, thank you for the great comment. I was wondering if you have any tips on bringing out the colors in pictures. I see amazing photographs with vibrant color. And they must be photoshopped. And one of some tips to get that same effect. Well, I have some tips for you to get that, that kind of effect, to bring out colors of the picture. Because, let's face it, sometimes we take a nice picture with our camera, we're out, and it looks really beautiful, there's great color. We get home, get on the computer, it looks a little flat, right? It looks a little, uh, well, the colors to be a lot less to be desired. So let's show you how to bring out those colors in that picture and actually make it pop a little bit. Now... Here's how we're going to go about doing that. Let me get this out of the way. And here is our picture we're going to work with. This is a picture um, of a dam. It's in, um, it's up in the mountains in Pennsylvania. You'll find it. It's called the Kinzu Dam if you want to visit. It's a beautiful place, a uh, great place to visit. Um, breathtaking for photography work. I know I spend a lot of time with the tripod up there. And I wanted to go ahead and show you this actual picture. And maybe how we can bring out the colors a little bit. How we can actually uh, enhance this picture a little bit. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, Jack, you can just click on Enhance. We can go to Auto Color Correction. And there we go. We have some more color. Yeah, that's okay. That's all right. But you're watching these videos because you want to know how to use Photoshop Elements. And you want to know how to actually work in the editor. So let's undo that. And a lot of people said, Jack, why don't you ever use these undos over here? Well, thanks for the tip, because you know what? I'm old school, and I always go to the pull-down menu. But, all right, undo. The other way we can do is enhance, adjust colors, and we can adjust all of these different color. We can remove color, adjust hue and saturation, and we can do that. We can adjust hue and saturation. We can change colors, and we can desaturate it and lighten it and do what we want. Now, you see what's happening, though. If I bring this all the way up, look what's happening. The water's affected, the sky's affected, the trees are affected, right? Desaturate. Look, everything's black and white, right? If we take this back to the dead center, take this back, lighten it. Look how it blows out the whole picture, right? Wow. 
Yeah, that's probably not the best way to go about doing this. Now, the way I like to do it, and you know, I tell everybody when I teach them computers, there's a thousand ways to work with the computer. There's probably a thousand ways to adjust color. This is just my way. This is the way I like to do it. Um, so if you adopt it, hey, great. Or maybe adopt some of the steps I use and maybe change some of the other steps. Maybe you don't like them. Okay, the first thing, let's get rid of this. I was playing. Here's our background. We can just do a Control J and we can duplicate that. Or on your Mac, do a Command J. Duplicate that layer. You can turn this layer off because we're not going to see it anyway. It doesn't matter. Just turn that off. That's the view option. We'll just click that eyeball off. Now, here's the first way I'm going to show you. You can use your quick selection tool and select what you want to actually change the color of. This is why I like doing it this way instead of going up here to enhance and working with hue and saturation I would rather select parts of the picture and work with individual parts and adjust that instead of adjusting the whole picture at one time now watch if we go down here to my famous tool the create adjustment layer we are going to go down to hue and saturation now look what already happened right here because make note of this because I'm going to show you another way to do this but it puts a mask on it and that mask is all black and the only thing selected is that center part right that's the only thing selected I'm going to show you another way to do this also but this is one way so that's selected now if we adjust the hue and saturation and lightness watch I'm going to blow the picture out I'm going to take it I'm going to overexpose it look what happened the water was left alone the sky was pretty much left alone I mean it might have caught some white from here but basically where I selected is blown out right it's overexposed let's underexpose it look what happened again the water's left alone the other way remember the other way adjusted the whole picture at one time not the best solution so now let's go ahead and try to adjust these trees a little bit I'll pull this down here if you can watch this hue we can adjust the coloring right make them colors pop So you see now how we brought more green out here. This back in here is not going to come out too green because if if I remember correctly, with the clouds going over, it kind of put a clouded cast on here or a shadow. So we're not going to be able to do a whole lot with bringing that color out. Saturation, that's just more green. See how you can oversaturate. Because when I oversaturate, look what happened back here. It turned it kind of a blue. It almost looks like a rock for, a rock face instead of a tree, right? So let's drop that saturation back just until we're leaving the shadows back here, but we're bringing this up. We're popping this green off the page. And we're going to make it a little greener. There we go. Now your lightness, don't blow it out too high. Now you don't want to make it unnatural. You can bring it up some because then what you're doing is you're putting more light back in here. So you can see a lot more definition of your picture just by using hue and saturation. Let's click OK on that. Now, here's the next stage. To do the water, I'm just going to show you another way to do it. Basically, we're still going to use the same mask, and we're still going to use the hue and saturation adjustment layer. Click back on your original layer that you made a duplicate of. Go right here. Again, go to hue and saturation. This time, don't adjust anything yet. Click OK. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, you'll know that if you paint, if you leave this white and you paint black, you're not going to get the effect you're going to have, right? you got to change the mask to black, and then you're going to paint over it with white, and that's going to basically select, just like the quick selection, but it's going to do a selection of what you want to change. So we have that. We do a control I, and we invert that to make it black. All right. And I, somebody emailed me a while back and asked, Jack, how do you know these keyboard shortcut keys? Just by doing it, uh, just by, you know, learning and reading as much as I could find on uh, shortcut keys. I am trying to compile a list, trying to get a list of different shortcut keys for you to put up on my website. So you can visit there and actually have a list. Uh, maybe I'll do it like in a PDF or something. You can print that thing out. Uh, I know I have one around here somewhere and I'll have to do that for you. Anyway, back to the lesson. So it's black now. 
you can see down here white is our foreground color let's select a brush now we're going to bring in this little harder brush here all right the size remember you can use your left and right bracket keys I had an email about a week ago said jack what is a bracket key well the bracket key on a standard windows keyboard is the first key diagonally under diagonally under the backspace key the left bracket key is pretty much right between or under your plus equal sign and the underscore and minus sign those are your bracket keys that is your right key makes it bigger left key makes it smaller and you can do it folks you can go up here and you can adjust it up here look if you put your mouse look how that is you can actually adjust your 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 size of your brush but you know when I'm working I like to just tap in bracket keys fast I mean it's really quick so that's how I like to do that so then once we have that selected we got our brush selected now we're ready to do a quick selection with this if you watch over here look how this is over here it's actually painting on it right so we're just coming around this water And I want to show you here how we can do this where it's not, I'm not going to do it all, watch, because watch what happens. There. We have that water, once you have that in there, that's selected, what we are going to do is double click on the hue and saturation, and now you can start working with just the water. Look at the edges up here, how I got the edges back here. Okay, we're going to leave that for now. We can saturate a little bit more we're gonna get a little purple here for demonstration purposes I know the water wasn't purple don't be writing in telling me Jack you messed the picture up because water's not purple I want to try to show you where I missed my selections this is why I'm trying to do this there we go now this is a nice way to look in here where I missed all you gotta do as long as this is still white this is still white all right let's see here So it looks pretty white to me you can just start going over those areas right just like this it's a nice way to see if you got everything actually in the selection right see how I missed the middle before okay and the more you go over it the darker the water is going to get right you're putting more more and more pressure on it so there you go now as you can see down here there's more and more of it now look back here where we got the trees we're like oh crap we got those trees all we got to do is change this make black our foreground color and now we're going to paint with black again left bracket key and then just go over this and we can bring those trees back out right can actually get rid of that back in there and if not we'll click on this one and we can actually flip those we can actually go back over this with a little bit more green okay and we know we're not leaving this purple. We're not going to leave the water purple. Let's go back down this one. Go ahead and double click your hue and saturation again. And then turn that saturation down. Now I'll we'll make it black here. Let's see here. Right, turn the saturation back a little bit. Then when you bring your lightness back up, you can see we can blend that back in back here. It's all blended back in. The water's starting to pop back out now. You can also go up here. I know people say you can go up there, Jack, and adjust more blue. All right, just work with blues. And it's going to keep our slider within the blue range. Saturate a little bit more. Oop, too much. And lightness. so there you go now you made that water more blue it's starting to pop off the page 
the trees are green and the skies there's not a whole lot I can do with that sky because of the way the sun was hitting and it was blowing it out I guess if you really tried you could probably color that or do something with that but what I would probably do to bring the viewer here anyway is I would probably take this picture and I would crop it off right so you're not viewing too much of the sky anyway you're going to crop it off everybody loves the crop tool everybody loves the crop tool and there you go you have more vibrant colors everything's popping off the page and it looks a lot nicer just take your time adjust that hue and saturation back and forth until you get it right you know use either the quick selection tool or the little masking trick I showed you it's really it doesn't matter so if you're looking for this video um, if you tell your friends about this video on YouTube we're gonna call it um, vibrant colors or vibrant coloring how about that so until next time remember get out there and I know I got to too I have to get out there you've seen a lot of my pictures from uh, the past I gotta get out there and get some new stuff get those cameras and get those shutters clicking you know that's the goal Take pictures, take pictures, take pictures. And even if you take the best picture in the world, you're still going to want to do some editing. Now, I met a lot of pro photographers out there, and they still love to edit. Just to enhance things a little bit here or there. And keep the editors editing. The more you get in here, folks, and play, the better you're going to be. If you get a chance, stop by my website, jackstechcorner.com. If nothing else, go to the forums, sign up for the web forums. Forms are just a nice place to go, hang out, um, look at the different stuff people are sending in. If you're having an issue, maybe the answer is already in there. So it's a nice place to hang out. And uh, I am working. A lot of people said, Jack, it would be great to have a social uh, networking site. So I'm putting together a social networking site. If you want to check it out, I'll see how many of you watch the end of this video. Go to, and no www, just in your, in your address bar, Jack's Tech Corner, period, Ning, that's N-I-N-G, dot com. And sign up in there. And let me see how many of you actually stayed to the end of this video to listen to my important, very important announcements. Hey, thanks for everybody for the great comments. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube videos, click the subscribe button. It helps me get those little badges on the bottom that says YouTube Partner Subscriptions of the Month or something. You know, it's cool. It's, it's a pat on the back for doing a good job. Till next time, take care, and I'll see you later. Bye for now.